Just under a decade ago, Nissan was readying itself to bring its first mass-produced electric car to market. That car, the original Nissan Leaf, as debuted in its production form in 2010, was one of the first mass-produced electric cars to ever go on sale from a major automaker. While it was pipped to the post in Japan by the Mitsubishi Aimev, Nissan began first bringing those cars in North America and other markets, and it gave it an edge that it held for many years. The edge Nissan enjoyed, plus the three production facilities that expanded Leaf production into three continents from 2012 onwards, meant that Nissan was producing cars at volumes that no other electric automaker at the time was matching. But in recent years, Nissan's gradually gone off the boil when it comes to electric cars. Following the arrest of former Renault-Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn on financial misconduct charges, the company hasn't really done a whole lot about promoting electric vehicles. Its attitude to existing owners has been bemoaned thanks to rising costs for battery replacements and a laissez-faire attitude to customer service. And the second-generation Nissan LEAF, available in both 40 kilowatt hour and 62 kilowatt hour variants, hasn't really stood up all that well to the competition from other cars, mainly the Tesla Model 3, Chevrolet Bolt EV, Hyundai Kona EV, Hyundai Ioniq EV, and Kia e Niro. And Nissan's once vibrant electric dream now seems a lot dimmer than it once was as a consequence. And in a recent interview with Automotive News Europe, Nissan's current boss seems to suggest that while Nissan is committed to producing its existing electric models, it's shifting its focus away from what it once would have termed mainstream models, and it's pushing instead towards a more premium segment. And that raises the following question. Should Nissan be shifting its focus on electric cars or not? And if it shouldn't, what should it be doing instead? To answer the question, let's go back to the car that started it all, the Nissan LEAF. The LEAF, which, by the way, was an acronym for Leading Environmentally Friendly Affordable Family Car, offered between 70 and 100 miles of range per charge, depending on the conditions and who you asked, and it was available with rapid charging, meaning that you didn't have to wait around for hours to refuel your car on longer distance trips. It had remote telematics, allowing you to precondition the car without being anywhere near it. And for a while, if you wanted an all-electric car and couldn't afford Tesla Model S money or didn't want the range-extended Chevrolet Volt, the LEAF was the car that you chose. In some markets, the LEAF was joined by the ENV200 electric minivan a few years later. It offered incredible luggage carrying capabilities in its two-seat commercial vehicle variant and up to seven seats in a more non-commercial variant. Based on LEAF tech, these two vehicles sold pretty well in their early years. While both vehicles weren't exactly cheap, Nissan's place in the market as a more mainstream, affordable brand made LEAF and ENV200 models vehicles that people could expand their budget to afford. But Nissan's poor PR and handling of a string of issues with its electric vehicles, noticeably premature battery degradation of early LEAFs in hot climates, the rapid gate debacle of late first generation and then early 40 kilowatt hour second generation leafs, and then the rising cost of battery replacement packs from $5,000 up to $8,500 has meant that its early customers are no longer as eager to stick with the brand as they might have been at one point. While the entry level point for a Nissan Leaf is now a lot lower than it once was, you can get an entry-level Nissan LEAF in the US from $29,900 US dollars before incentives. Increased competition from other brands means that Nissan doesn't appear to be selling as many LEAFs as it once did. In October, for example, US sales totaled 887 units, and even in its home market of Japan, the LEAF struggled, down 51% year-on-year, compared to the same month last. The reasons for this drop are many, but increased competition from other brands and a second-generation car that's heavily based on the first-generation model with a larger capacity battery pack haven't really helped. But the real reason I think that Nissan is down is because of its decision not to use active thermal management in its electric car battery packs. 
And that's a decision which is really starting to haunt the company. At this point, I feel compelled to point out that I've owned two Nissan Leafs and we only recently sold our most recent one. That original Leaf was a cracking car and is one that I am still a big fan of. In fact, we'd still own a Leaf if we could have easily financed a larger battery pack upgrade, but that's for a different video. The second generation refresh didn't feel enough to keep the Leaf up to date with other models in the market, as I'll be detailing with a review of the Leaf E Plus we're currently working on for publishing in a month or so's time. I'm personally frustrated that Nissan hasn't kept up with the market and I hope it regains some of its electric car mojo. But when it comes to the current Leaf, I'm just unable to get excited in a market where you have fantastic cars like the Tesla Model 3, Kia e Nero, and upcoming hot hatches in Europe from the likes of Peugeot and Opel. But it's not just Nissan's electric vehicles that are feeling the squeeze, it's the entire brand. So far this year, Nissan struggled across Europe with volumes of the first 10 months of the year down a quarter on what they were last year. Its market share has dwindled. It's cut shifts at the Sunderland plant in the UK where European market leafs are made. And in Barcelona where the ENV200 is made, 700 jobs have been cut. Neither vehicle appears at the top of Nissan's priority list because it's focusing instead on surviving in a market where demand for its forte hatchbacks and sedans, is dwindling. Earlier this year, we saw the Nissan Aria concept debut in Japan. That car, it's all electric, meets the growing auto market trend towards SUVs and away from hatchbacks and sedans. And when it comes to market, Nissan is making no bones about the fact that it will be sold as a premium electric SUV, which will sit at the higher end of its total portfolio, just where the Infiniti brand would be in Europe, were it not for the fact that Infiniti isn't sold in Europe anymore because Nissan killed Infiniti in Europe. Right now, Nissan appears to be targeting a price between $55,000 and $80,000 for the Aria. And for that, a price that's well outside of Nissan's general comfort zone, it will need to make the Aria heavily packed with tech and be luxurious to boot because that's well within the Tesla Model Y market and above the target market for many of its existing customers. Sure, Nissan's Infiniti brand exists to sell more premium models, just as Lexus does for Toyota and Acura does for Honda. But Infiniti has been pulled out of Europe, leaving this high-end Aria in a similar position to Volkswagen trying to sell the Phaeton under a badge that it really shouldn't have tried to do. Regular Nissan customers, well, in the future, it seems Nissan's goal is to electrify its existing fleet with non-plug-in e-power technology. This allows it to reduce emissions for at least the general part of its fleet, while focusing its all-electric technology at a higher market point where customers will pay. But here is the big problem. Nissan isn't a high-end luxury automaker. Sure, its sports cars will sell for big money because it's proven itself in that market segment. But a high-end luxury electric SUV? That's risky, especially when premium brands from Europe and, of course, Tesla are all over it. Here I should throw in some usual caveats about not knowing what's going on behind the scenes. I am no executive. I don't know what Nissan is planning. Maybe the Aria is a way for Nissan to expand its Leaf drivetrain and development into the future. But from an outside perspective, it seems that the Leaf and the ENV200 will continue, just not be the main focus for Nissan right now. And that's a shame because save for the whole battery pack issue, I still think Nissan makes some of the best electric cars on the road. They've proven themselves incredibly reliable, save for the battery. I've met literally thousands of people for whom the Leaf was their first real-world experience of an electric car. People who couldn't have afforded a more expensive model and people who didn't want a more expensive model. People who have wanted what Nissan has been good at offering. Everyday drivers that aren't flashy or over the top but just get the job done. We could of course argue until the metaphorical cows come home that Nissan hasn't always been the most reliable brand out there. And we could argue that Nissan only has itself to blame for the drop in interest in its electric vehicles. But with a new hand on the wheel at Nissan and financial pressures mounting, I can't help but think Nissan should double down on the leaf. First, it should fix the Achilles heel of both models, namely the battery packs for the EMV200 and Leaf. 
They should listen to existing customers and make them proud to own a Nissan EV. And also, Nissan needs to be willing to admit when mistakes were made in previous designs and fix them for the future. The LEAF and the ENV200 have the potential to live on for many years, but my fear is that with this new shiny Aria EV, the focus will shift away from its core market and core competencies simply because a previous engineering decision backfired. What do you think? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. <music>